Do you remember switching from PC to Mac? That's what switching to Lumos was like for me. I wouldn't go back to using any other system. Hey, I'm Finn, a designer and developer at Antler, and currently I'm in the process of migrating Antler's Webflow website to Lumos. So I wanted to make this video to show you why I'm doing that and how Lumos is turning me into a better Webflow developer. If you've been around the Webflow space for a while, you would have definitely heard of Lumos, created by Timothy Ricks. Lumos is a Webflow framework geared towards enterprise builds, and many Webflow developers, including myself, have avoided using Lumos because it's too complicated or you must know how to code to use Lumos. But after using Lumos for a few months now, I realized I was completely wrong. You don't need to be a coder to use Lumos, and it's actually made developing in Webflow easier for me. Now, whether you end up using Lumos or not, you can really benefit from watching this video because what Lumos really is is just the best practices of web development applied to Webflow. One of the first things that freak out Webflow developers diving into Lumos is that all our styles are connected to CSS variables. In Lumos, what we do is store our CSS styles as variables, and then on our classes, we reference those variables. And what's the difference, you might wonder? Well, using variables is more scalable and it makes managing our global styles easier. Let's just say you wanted to update a dark background color for your theme. If you had applied that style on, say, your card, your section, your buttons, even your text, you'd have to go through manually and update all of those colors on all the classes you'd applied it from. If you applied that dark theme to a variable, then you update it in one place and then all of the classes that are using that variable will also update. And remember, this doesn't just apply to text or color, it applies to any CSS style property that we're using on our website. In short, the advantage of variables is it allows us to manage our site in a more scalable way. And with Lumos, all these variables come set up for you, organized into collections and pre-applied to elements on the style guide. Now let's move on to components. As you can see going through the structure of this section, pretty much all the building blocks of Lumos are actually components within components. Components allow non-technical people, like your clients, to edit their site much easier. By using components and component props, we can set up our sections so that our clients can jump in and not just modify content, but also style or change layouts or add and remove elements. What this allows is for people in a, like a non-designer role, using Webflow as a marketer or a content editor, they can actually build their own pages if you're using page slots and they can customize every section on that page via props. But now let's move on to fluid sizing, which is actually the feature that got me into Lumos in the first place. What you might notice is that when you're setting your font sizes based on breakpoints, at the start of the breakpoint, say your desktop breakpoint, everything looks really good. But as soon as you start reducing the screen size, getting down to just above tablet, you enter this kind of awkward zone where your text and elements just start feeling a bit too big. But notice how fluid font sizes and all fluid sizes scale down as the screen gets smaller, meaning that our site looks more balanced across all our screen sizes. And this fluid sizing isn't something that's exclusive to Lumos, it's used by software developers everywhere. And this is what I'm saying about, you know, Lumos is just taking the best practices from web development and bringing them into Webflow, which is a super awesome thing. Let me show you the Webflow Fluid Builder app built by Timothy Ricks. It's one of the most easy ways to use fluid fonts and fluid sizing in general within Webflow. So on the left, we've got the size of our font at our site's max width. And on the right, we define that size on our site's minimum width. And everywhere in between, that size is gonna be scaling nice and smoothly. You know, these variables are referenced in our typography collection, and you can see that it's using the CSS clamp property. Now the cool thing about the Fluid Builder is that it totally abstracts you needing to know how to code or know how to use CSS clamp. And obviously fluid sizing isn't just limited to typography, it's also can be used on any spacing element inside of Webflow. Now I've gone over it a lot already, so let's just jump into some four quick fire features I love about Lumos. First we have the Lumos nav. This is one of the best things about Lumos, is this default nav that just comes out of the box. It automatically switches to mobile nav based on the user's font size, so we don't have to worry about running out of space for our links. Dropdowns come set up with a smooth open and close animation, fully customizable in our variables collection. Each dropdown waits until the other one has closed fully before opening. It's also an accessible nav that has all the correct area labels and list elements, which helps screen readers navigate and are just great for accessibility. 
Next up is font trimming. With font trimming, you can make sure that all of your text aligns perfectly, that it gets trimmed exactly where the text stops so that all your spacings and layouts look correct. They look even. Another feature I like is the global visual component, which is basically just an image component, but it has a really cool placeholder background so that if someone on a slower connection is trying to load your site, that it just shows them an image is gonna be there soon. Lumos also comes with a grid guides component, which shows you while you're developing if your layouts are aligned to the grid. On the live site, this is not displayed, but pretty handy when you're developing. So remember how I said Lumos is pointless? Wait, I meant to say break pointless. What if instead of developing our layouts based on a screen size, we develop layouts based on the content requirements inside the layout? Let's see how we can do this in Lumos. Take UGrid AutoFit, which is a Lumos grid that's automatically responsive out of the box. Children equally share the available space and they wrap to the next line when they reach the minimum width you define. That's the key detail right there. We can specify a minimum width for grid children on the base class. And now children wrap exactly when they reach this value. No more waiting till the next breakpoint to remove a grid column. We can choose exactly when they start wrapping. Another good example is UGrid above, which is a Lumos grid where it wraps to a vertical flex box based on the container's threshold. By default, it's threshold large, which means that the grid wraps to flex a bit sooner, but I can change this to threshold medium for it to wrap later. And I can even change it to threshold small and it wraps much later like this. This is a smarter way to develop. The final thing I want to address in this video is like, are there any drawbacks to Lumos? Well, kind of. So one of the things about Lumos is that it's always changing. If you look at the change log here, you'll see all of the changes and updates that are being made to Lumos. And what this means is that often, you know, when you come to a new project, you find that you've got to develop things in a different way because things are being done in a new way in Lumos. This is because every time Webflow releases a new feature or there's a new CSS feature that gets released, Timothy will integrate that into Lumos if it's beneficial for the framework. So even though it might be annoying to find that the way you were doing things has now changed, it's actually for a good reason. And that means that if you're using Lumos, you know that you're always developing with the most cutting edge framework for Webflow. I said Lumos is always changing, but actually Lumos is always evolving, which is a much better way to look at it in my opinion. So those are my thoughts on using Lumos for three months. I'm still a beginner. I'm still making mistakes, but I'm really loving it so far. And the community has been really supportive of my questions in uh, Timothy Rix's Discord. So yeah, give it a try. Comment below what framework you're using or if you do like Lumos or maybe why you haven't tried it out yet. And I'll definitely encourage you to try it and see what you think.